Hi, I'm Jeff Alpin, The Big Game Hunter, and welcome back to Job Search TV. And um, this is going to be fun. I've interviewed Olivia Jarris before. She's interviewed me before. And we got together to talk about interviewing during pandemic. Ooh, drama, drama. So we're both going to share this in information uh, with different audiences. And she's going to introduce herself now and maybe me. So... Olivia, take it away. <laughs> I'm not here. Can you, you hear me there? Now I hear you. Can Good. you hear me there? Yeah. Well, listen, this, I have a new microphone, and this thing is driving me a little bit crazy. But ladies who are listening to this, this is an impromptu session that Jeff and I, and you know who Jeff is. He is the big game hunter. He is the top dog when it comes down to interviewing and acing difficult interviews. And we are here today because both of us were like, you know what? Things are going a little crazy in this world and things are changing. And so should your strategy, especially when it comes down to landing your dream opportunity, connecting with that dream opportunity, interviewing for that new position. So many people are losing their jobs and are finding themselves trying to connect with new opportunities, but they don't necessarily know how things have changed with COVID-19. Hence, we're here. So for the next couple of minutes, you better be paying attention because this is gonna be a total game changer for opening doors and opportunities that you perhaps didn't think you had. How did I do? You're doing great. And we're going to do this no BS <laughs> style. I'm not going to wind up filtering anything. This is completely off the cuff. We're going to have fun. fun. Yay, I'm excited. All right. Okay. Well, where so, should we start, Jeff, Olivia? I want to start this off, if that's okay with you. I cannot tell you how many emails, like we run this thing called the Her LinkedIn Challenge. How many ladies keep talking about like, Oh my gosh, I connected with someone at XYZ company. How do I have a conversation? Like, how do I even start interviewing with people? Or how do I approach this fact that like, even if I did have an opportunity, I can't move. I'm here. Like, what do they do? What, what's changed in these times? So I want to start off with that add a girl for that person. And if you're a guy doing this, an add a boy, because you did the right thing. You started off with networking, which is really going to be the ticket for getting back to work. As we're recording this since beginning of March, when the country was shut down, 36 million people have lost their jobs. A certain Insane. number of them are going to be coming back to work. It's going to be slow. It's like a drip marketing. It's going to be a slow process. And I've started to talk to employers about their hiring process because I believe a lot of employers are going to find hiring by video a scary thing for them because they've got to learn a different skill set and they've got to take the leap of faith. Part of, your about yeah, part of your job, folks, is to make yourself into someone that they can trust. Now, where does all of this start? I believe it starts with your network of relationships and reconnecting with folks um, and doing it in the most graceful way you possibly can. Now, this is a little bit before your question. So, again, I'm going to come back to the question specifically. But, but that's right. That's right. It's yeah. Networking is so important. Big time. And this is like the Christmas period in terms of how easy it is to network because like at Christmas, it feels like a hundred years since we were last in contact is the typical text or email I tell people to send to folks. Well, this is the time is it, where you can say to people, hey, I know it's been a long time, but your name popped into my mind. I just want to see how you were and how your family was. Are you okay? What's been going on for you? It's about the reconnection, about reconnecting with people from your past. Now, as always, not everyone's going to respond. It's just the way it is. But the right people will. Now, sometimes your email may be caught by spam filters. And no disrespect 
you know, to uh, the different male services, but sometimes they overreach. Like happened with someone I'm coaching now who messaged an old client of his, his message got caught in the corporate servers uh, and was treated oh, really? as, as spam. So just be aware, you may need to follow up at least once. So Well, and that that's one of the, the, the interesting things is that people don't necessarily realize that right now during this crisis is a perfect opportunity to reach out to long lost connections that could actually help hook you up with that next opportunity. Like there's such an opportunity hidden that most people overlook and they're not seeing how indeed there's, there's gold right here. Like this is the time to reach out to that old connection, that former client, that former boss and ask to see how they're doing. Like that's genius. And uh, thank you. <laughs> and again, this is like an informational interview a process where you're checking in with people. How are you? What's been going on for you? How's your wife, husband, partner? How are the kids? You know, what's going on for you? And you sit and listen and you share stories. You just make it a personal contact. Now, conversation too may take place a week or two later where, and this is where we're coming back to the original question, where you can speak with someone and go, you know, I was wondering what's going on in your organization. Now this person was networking. This person was already networking and this is a slightly different language that you might use where you're in the position where you say, Hey, look, I'm one of the 36 million and yours is an organization I've targeted. I'd really love to be associated. And this is what I do. You don't know me from a hole in the wall but I'm looking for information about how I might approach your organization. Whether I keep your name out of it or not, that's your decision. My feelings aren't hurt if you say no. But, I like that. But what, I really like that. Thank you. What's going on there? And if you want to take a half step back, you can also say, I'm curious about what you are seeing in your industry as, as the economy is opening up. What's the conversation in your organization about bringing people back and bringing people on? And thus, here's their listening. And you're asking appropriate follow-up questions like, what sort of people are they bringing back? What sort of people are they considering bringing on board? What are you hearing? How is this affecting budget cycle? Now, I'm mentioning budget cycle for a reason. Because as we're recording this, it's mid-May 2020. If you think about when calendar year corporations finalize budgets, you know this, October, right? September? They're, they're not... It depends. It depends on the company. That's right. a tricky question. I know that, but at latest it's October. Now, the goal you should have with your network is that you're in front of people that you know. And thus, maybe they can write you into the budget. Right. And thus they can... Although a lot of people right now are kind of holding off on adding anything to the budget because they see the uncertain future. Like this truly resembles... Depression. Whether we call it or not. A, a recession period, right? Where people are like stalling just because of the fear of the unknown. But... You can take advantage of the situation too, right? right? One of the things I think kind of can also tie into what you're saying is when you see that there is no budget, right? Or allegedly they're telling you that there's no budget or that you can foresee them saying that there's going to be no budget. What you can do is offer to help them out for free for a couple of weeks. And I know this is unconventional, but We've gotten women hired many places by using this technique, by kind of offering up to lighten the load of the CEO for a little while. In fact, I got, I, I've hired teammates in our team like that too. And, and it works, especially when they're under stress, when they realize that they can trust you and help the situation like that. 
is one way to do, deal with budget. But sorry, I totally cut you off there. No, no, no. Because everything works. It never, it just never works as, as often as we would like it to work. And thus the idea is to put out ideas to people of how you can serve. So in your example of working free, or another version of that is, I don't know if you might need someone on an interim basis as, you know, with a particular expertise like mine, where, you know, you're working, you know, uh, uh, as an individual who appeared uh, as a consultant, a temp, whatever the level of employment you have, uh, in a staff augmentation basis that allows them to evaluate your work or do it free. Either way is fine. Whatever works for them, because it gets you in the door. The goal is some version of extended relationship with someone. And a lot of people are going to push back and say, no, 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 no. Let's just keep talking and get acquainted. And there's a difference between what you can broach with someone that you know versus someone that you don't know. Right. Someone that what you do know. You do then? Well, someone that you know, you may intru may introduce you to someone, but your right. job is to get in front of the process because there are still folks that are sitting around at home watching Netflix and they're not being proactive. This is not going to be a recovery that's going to be based upon answering job ads. Mm -hmm. that, that's casting your line in the water where there's lots of fish and you're expecting to be the one fish that jumps on the hook doesn't work. <laughs> that way. The statistical probability is pretty small. The idea is under the, under the best of circumstances, 70% of positions are filled as a result of your network. 70% of the 70% come as a result of introductions to people your network knows who you don't. So mm -hmm. you, you've got to start working your connections and recruiters Agency recruiters are not going to be tre tremendously helpful. Now, I tell you, you should contact them. I worked in search for more than 40 years. I've got nothing against recruiters. And their importance is going to be minimized because they're st staring at HR organizations who are going, what are you paying a fee for? You've got 36 million people to choose from. Let's see who's out there for free first before we start writing out expensive checks, right? You know this from your own experience. Right. So they don't contact the recruiter or do they still contact the recruiter just in case? You do everything. You would... I, th yeah, I, think, I think you should throw the kitchen thing, sink strategy, like do the kitchen sink and throw it at everything, right? Connect with your network. Try to get introductions through your network to broaden your network. But then also if there are recruiters and headhunters hiring, well, then connect with them too. But one of the things though that I will warn, and that is from my experience in, in like the compensation side of the world, that organizations, broadly speaking, when times are not looking good ahead, some of the first people to go are recruiters and headhunters and hiring managers because mm -hmm. you're downsizing. Like if you're facing a downsize, those are the frontline, I mean, I'm sorry for any recruiter or headhunter who's hearing me here, but you guys probably know this, right? That those are the first people to go. Mm -hmm. So they, they already know, you know, sorry, I was talking to a former client of mine from when I did search yesterday and you know, he most recently ran corporate HR for a multi-billion dollar firm. Terrific guy. I enjoyed working with him as a client. He was out the door three months ago. He said, I came close on COVID, but COVID got in the way on three uh, jobs I was up for. And now he's basically sucking wind. He's got nothing going on uh, at the point where he might be selling his house, moving uh, back to his original place of residence, all that sort of stuff, because it's within the school year. So that might be the best approach for him. But for those of you who are looking, you have to spend most of your time on your network, not on looking on job boards, not looking at publicly available. That is sheer jobs. gold. You need to be looking at your own network, not at the job boards. It's all about time management now. 
you know, if you think that 70% of jobs are going to be filled through your network, why are you spending 70% of your time or more on job boards? It makes no sense. But that's what exactly. people do. Because networking feels hard. But if you treat it as something where it's reconnecting with people from your past and asking them who they know. Right. And taking advantage of this opportunity right now. Like this is where I was thinking, I'm like, man, networking right now is so easy. I've actually reached out to people that I like, I, actually this, this happened to me. There's this one person that I truly admire and I wanted to interview him. I've wanted to interview him for my podcast for years. His name is Joe Navarro. And I, in the past, I've written to him four times. And I've totally been rejected, right? But some of the times, like, I wasn't actually asking for him to be on my podcast, but I was just checking in saying, hey, hope you're doing well, blah, blah, blah. But this time, I probably three weeks ago, I sent him an email and said, hey, I hope you and your family are doing well throughout this crisis. I was just thinking of all of you. And I was wondering if perhaps maybe you have a couple of minutes to hop on an interview with me. And pretty, 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 please fulfill this dream that I've had of interviewing you for years. Guess what? Not only did I get him on the interview, but I also got him to refer another expert that I've also been wanting to interview to get on board too. So it's time. If you've never networked, if you've always sucked at networking, like right now is the perfect time to do this. And I'm going to change your language just a little bit. It's not that you suck at networking. Most of the time, people are afraid to network. They don't want to look like one of those people. Uh, they don't want to seem desperate. They're afraid of rejection. Let's just accept the notion that a lot of folks are going to be rejected. But you still got to do it anyway. Right. And the truth is, like, I think, though, there's always approach, right? A no right now, a rejection right now, doesn't mean a rejection forever. I mean, Joe rejected me three different times. He kept saying like, oh, sorry, just my book's in the pipeline. I can't do this. I can't do this. And he finally said yes, right? So, I mean, a rejection right now, like, and this is something that I think in particularly, particular seems to hurt women is that we feel a rejection is a no on us, like a failure on us, that we don't deserve it, that we're bad, that we're not good enough, right? When really all it means is, in this case, for example, it was no, because it, I don't have time right now. Not that I don't wanna help you, it's just right now is the bad time. And it could be the bad time right now when you connect with someone, right? What do you do if you get rejected? Like, what do you suggest? When I worked in search and we lost a placement, someone turned down an offer or they accepted a counter offer and we lost a fee. The common language in the office was to say, next, you got to go on to the next thing. Yes, it's okay to lick your wounds a little bit and feel the disappointment, but to let it languish for lengthy periods of time doesn't serve you. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm going to use a, an example uh, I believe interviewing and job search is very much like dating. And thus, the notion of being broken up with is very... Yes, that's true. It has a similar feel to it. I've been rejected. And it's okay to feel rejected, but you can't allow yourself to wallow in it. It's you have to lick your wounds and go on to the next thing. It doesn't have to be the next 10 seconds that you do it. <laughs> Although if you're able to pull that off, great, but I don't think it's really useful. I think it's okay to, to languish in it for no more than 24 hours and then move on and start mm. getting to the next thing uh, and reaching out some more. So right. rejection is going right. to happen. But you have to not dwell on it. And I love that idea. And especially because we get to so tied up emotionally. Like you're saying, it's kind of like a breakup. But the reality is 
it's not on you necessarily. It might be something completely unrelated. As you pointed out, he had a book to do, right? <laughs> and it wasn't the right time for him. Or they may have a project that they're doing or they have travel that's already booked and it's just not a convenient time. Whatever it is, it's not about you. It's about them. It's now, you know that I would probably suggest your starting point to be your email network. Like you've got so many email addresses to start looking through and sifting through to start networking. But I'd also suggest LinkedIn. Is there anything that you would suggest they do other than those two? Yeah, Pick you, up missed, the phone. you missed one. Text one? network. Text network. You're so 1990s talking about email. <laughs> For the people that you're really close to, you text them. So start with your text network. And then from and there, what, right. Start with text. Go to email. Then go to, uh, to Facebook. Or Facebook, because those are people that you may know personally. And it's yeah. less formal than like Right. I love that. Start, start with text, go to email, then go to Facebook or do those two at the same time and then go to LinkedIn. And you can send messages to people through Messenger. So it's a private message. You don't have to publicly say, I'm pathetic. I need a job. Can anyone help me? And you know, no one's going to respond to that. Right. And if they do, I'm they're going to... They're going to give you the pat on the head, but right. what, you, what you're now able to do with Facebook, which is really a fun idea, is they now have their equivalent of Zoom and Skype with Facebook rooms. Yeah. So, you, so it, this is not designed to be sexual as I say it. You can grab a room with someone <laughs> and start the conversation pretty quickly. That's awesome. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here you have it. This is our primer on how do you deal with interviews in during this COVID-19 craziness? How do you actually take advantage of the situation to reconnect with your network and start landing those dream opportunities? And I'm going to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, winners find the way to win. And your excuses aren't going to get you across the finish line. You just have to keep doing the stuff that is going to work. It may not work as often as you like. It never works as often as we like. But you just got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Wasn't that a fun conversation? I'm Jeff Altman. Uh, Olivia and I have known one another for about a year now. And it, it was a fun, impromptu conversation. Uh, about how to job hunt during pandemic. Let me just say, if you're interested in my coaching work, visit my website, thebiggamehunter.us. There's a button there that says schedule. Schedule time for a free discovery call or schedule time for coaching. I'd love to help you. In addition, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You do that by clicking the small icon in the lower right or the picture of me in the upper left. And I'm sure you know some people who could be helped by this video. Forward it to them, share it, share it on social media. Do stuff to get the word out about how to job hunt during these times. I'll be back soon with more. In the meantime, I hope you have a great day. Be great.